Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jen and in today's video we're going to go over CSCS chapter 22. This chapter is on rehabilitation and reconditioning. I'm especially excited for this chapter because I'm a physical therapist. That's what I primarily do. And so let's dive right in. Um, we're going to take a look at sports med team here. So quickly glance over who makes up the sports med teams, team physician, athletic trainer, physical therapist, strength and conditioning professional, exercise physiologist, nutritionist, counselor, psychologist, and psychiatrist, right? Something to look at real quick. And let's take a closer look at macro trauma versus micro trauma. So macro trauma is a specific or a sudden overload injury that causes a contusion or a fracture, for example. So looking at uh, the joint trauma here, dislocation could happen, right? It's a complete displacement of joint surface or subluxation, partial displacement of joint surface. So dislocation is more of a fracture, right? Versus of subluxation is a partial displacement um, from the surface there. And so taking a look at sprain versus strain here, ligaments usually get sprained and then muscles tend to get strained, right? So ligament sprains, there's first degree, second degree, and third degree. First degree sprain is a partial tear of the ligament without increased joint instability. So there's a little bit of a tear and then not too much of an instability. That's the first degree. The second degree, now there's a minor instability and then it's still a partial tear. And then a third degree, Ligament sprain is a full tear with full instability. Looking at uh, muscle strain, there's direct strains, we call that a contusion, and then there's indirect strains, and we just call that strains. So there's three degrees here as well. The first degree is partial tear, but you can still activate that muscle, it's still strong, and there's a little bit of pain, right? With the first degree, so first degree, strong but painful. Second degree, weak and painful, right? So now the muscle's gotten a little weaker. You're still feeling that pain, that second degree um, muscle strain. And then third degree is weak and now there's no pain, right? It's because it's a complete tear of that muscle. So read over that. And then microtrauma is an overuse injury. So if macrotrauma is caused by something very specific and um, stressful that's overloading the tendon, microtrauma is because of that repetitive overuse. And so things like training errors, suboptimal training surfaces, faulty biomechanics, insufficient motor control that overload one tendon or a muscle tends to cause microtrauma. So if it's at the bone, stress fractures are things that could happen because of that rapid increase in training volume. Um, you tend to see some of these stress fractures in youth athletes um, in their bones. And then if it's in the tendon, um, you can get tendonitis or inflammation of a tendon. So things like tennis elbow, for example, um, where the elbow gets inflamed because of the tendon that attaches um, to the elbow. That's because of the repetitive overuse. So moving on to tissue healing. So there's three phases here, inflammatory response phase, which is the first phase, fibroblastic repair phase, which is the second phase, and then the maturation remodeling phase. And that is the last phase there. So Taking a look at the first phase, the inflammation happens, right? That's the initial reaction to the injury. And then you can see some local and systemic inflammation. You might see some swelling. You might see some bruises locally. And then systemically, they want to try to bring a lot of blood to the area so they can bring um, chemical mediators and increase uh, the blood flow to the area so the tissue can heal faster. Right? So locally, it may be hypoxic, which means there's not a, lot, not a lot of oxygen there, but systemically, you want to try to pull everything in there um, so it can heal. The second phase here is the fibroblastic repair phase. 
metabolism and replacement of tissues that are no longer viable. Don't know if you guys remember from earlier um, in the book, but catabolism, you're breaking things down and then replacing them. And then in that spot where everything's kind of broken down, type 3 collagen gets deposited. And then finally, the maturation remodeling phase, type 1 collagen gets deposited. So let's take a look at this graph here. You still see that inflammatory response phase in the beginning, fibroblastic repair phase, and then maturation remodeling phase at the end. Pain is going to be very um, acute, and you're going to feel a lot of pain in the beginning. And as we get into that healing fibroblastic repair phase, where type 3 collagens get deposited, the pain is slowly going to go down, right? And then tissue healing, of course, is going to be opposite of that. It's going to take some time for the tissue to heal. And then adequate tissue healing threshold, it's important to know when to safely resume full activity. And that's the sweet spot that we want to target at maturation or modeling phase. We don't want to go return to full activity too soon or too late. All right, moving on to uh, the next slide here, things to keep in mind. Healing tissue must not be overstressed. So it kind of goes hand in hand with what I was just saying about not overstressing a healing tissue too soon. And then here, also same thing, athlete must meet specific objectives to progress from one phase to another. And this is what we do in physical therapy, essentially, is we provide you um, some guidance and safe milestones that are structured for you to achieve success long term. So uh, there are three steps that we just talked about, three phases, inflammatory response phase. In this phase, you want to try to prevent um, disruption of new tissue, right? And so because it's still healing, you're concerned more about uh, safety. So treatment goal here is relative rest physical agents, um, icing it, compression, elevation, resting it. That's going to be important there. Uh, max protection of the area, like I said, safety is number one um, at this stage. So wearing something like a boot or a cast might be necessary. Um, general aerobic and aerobic training. And then exercise strategy is, like I said, passive rest. Moving on to the fibroblastic repair phase. Now the treatment goal becomes a little more um, complicated, right? So you want to try to prevent excessive muscle atrophy because we don't want the athlete to return to their sport too late. Um, so appropriate exercises is going to be important here. Um, and you also want to try and keep the joint from deteriorating too much because what's not used gets atrophied. Low load stress gradually introduced. So at this point, you want to still try to avoid active resistance exercises um, and you're slowly reintroducing that low load um, exercises for the athlete or your patient. So with exercises, isometric is a good place to start um, once you're in this phase of the fibroblastic repair phase. There are several research out there that shows that isometric exercises do have some analgesic effects around a joint. And so that's a very safe place to start. And then moving on to eccentric exercises where you're lengthening the muscle and producing um, a force. So greater force production and less energy expenditure compared to concentric exercises there. And also very important in this phase, neuromuscular control, so ability of muscles to respond to afferent sensor info, um, reteaching and relearning how to respond to stimulus um, with muscles. This phase is going to be important as well, so that could help with some of the joint stability as well. And then finally, the last phase is fibroblastic repair phase. And this is when we get into return to sport testing and seeing how the athlete does compared to how they were before. Maybe if you have that data 
but we want to try to simulate the environment that they're going to go into um, as best as possible. And so the treatment goal here is progressive tissue loading. And of course, that's going to result in improved collagen fiber alignment and fiber hypertrophy. And with exercises, a couple of different things here, joint angle specific training. So training and prescribing exercises in certain um, joint angles that's functional for the athlete is going to be crucial here. Velocity specific muscle activity, are we focusing more on decelerating, accelerating? Where are their deficits? How can we prevent re-injury is going to be fundamental in thinking about velocity specific exercises there, closed chain exercises and sports specific activities um, at this phase. So that is it for this chapter. It's a very short chapter. Um, I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to talk to you guys. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.